Hey there, y'all. How are you? Good, and you? Doing well. Very nice. I'm trying to find the best uh, view. Does anybody know what the vet best view would be? Okay. Eh, we'll go with this. <laughs> <laughs> you could do the gallery, Mike. If gallery, that works for you. Maybe so. Yeah, that's and more. And I might work. Yeah. Yeah, that's more. I might work. I'll be quiet, but just wanted to let you know that I'm here and listening. All right. So. What, uh, what's been going on? Oh, nothing much. I don't know if you heard about the new regulation that's coming out on July 5th by the FCC, FAA. I don't know whoever manages, um, you know, the phone call issues, like the calls and FAA is the uh, airlines and FCC is the phones. Okay, so yeah. So then it would be that. Let me just... Hold on one second and I'll tell you. Um, so this is from my other group that uh, these guys work on some mastermind group that is that you need to be doing $3 million a year on. Um, they do. So this is what their mastermind told them and he shared it with us here. Um, give me just one second here. I'm just trying to find it. Where it went. Um, hold on. Sorry, I couldn't uh, have it here. There it is. Okay, so it says here, it's an FCC regulation where it says anybody doing telemarketing or multiple calls will have to have their numbers registered. Um, there's a registration link and it is all for Telephone Consumer Protection Act that they have gone into. And um, if you don't register, then you cannot make more than 10 calls Hold on, I'm having a hard time. I can I can share it with you guys later. Um, it's it's ten calls I think a month. That's all you can do. And if you break the rules, your fines can be up to forty three thousand dollars. <laughs> that must uh, I I bet if you dig into that a little bit further, you're going to find that if you're selling something. Um, it doesn't say, but this came from a real estate investing uh, mastermind program. Yeah. That does training for people who do three million dollars and more in business. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure. I haven't Googled it. I just I got it this afternoon and I I shared it with another friend of mine, Sean, who's been doing this. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's kind of good to look into it. It's called they want us to register with uh, with the do not call registry, the DNC registry all businesses that make multiple calls, telemarketing calls. Yeah, and that would be to consumers. I've, so, I've, I've been down this road before. If you actually, the thing about, I heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy, uh, generally they drop off like 90% of it. Okay. And what that is, is I get it. You know, how many of us get robocalls to our phones? From people selling you insurance to... People trying to sell you, uh, you know, uh, uh, extended warranties on your car, you know, all that stuff. Right. But the difference right. with what we do is we call, I mean, if you're, if you're calling, you know, if you're calling sellers, you're not selling yeah. anything. You're offering to buy their house. Right. You're not, so you're not selling anything. You're just calling, you're calling, you know, and if you're calling at 10 o'clock at night, well, you should get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with that. You know, even I, I not, I. I don't, I generally don't start making my phone calls until nine o'clock Eastern. And then I knock off around seven o'clock at night. Right. You know, anything after that, you're getting into personal time. Right. No, I, I understand. I just, this came to me on my real estate group because so I wanted to share it with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We've been down, we've, we've been down this road a whole bunch of times. And, and basically what it is, is the United States can pass all the laws in the world. Right. But those big players, their servers will be in the Bahamas or they'll be in, you know, some Western European country that are not affected by U.S. laws. Right. It's the same thing with the gambling sites. None of the gambling sites have servers 
in the United States. All the servers are outside of the United States, so that's why it's legal. So if my VA is sitting in Egypt, would he have to register the numbers? Uh, not if he's making phone calls from Egypt. Okay. Now, that being said, are you using a service? Um, I don't know. I use their dialer. I should find out what their dialers are. Like, I use Batch Dialer. Okay. That's a multi, multi, multi million dollar, probably tens of millions of dollars a month that they do in sales. Right. I and this batch you, leads you're talking about, right? Batch leads. Yeah. I guarantee you that they are not going to run afoul of the FTC. Okay. Yeah. They're a big corporation. I'm sure they they heard about this and they started planning for it before, before the law was even passed. Okay. That's the nice thing about working with a company like Batch or any other dialing companies is, you know. So I'm working with a company called, um, I don't know if you've heard about him, but he's big, Max Maxwell. Yeah, I know Max Maxwell. So he has a VA company, VA Mastery or something it's called. I forgot even what it's called. Um, so that's the company, VA Mastery System. Yeah. And then he has also Dial Pros. So if you want cold calling, you can use the Dial Pros. If you want actual VA, then you can use the VA service. So I'm using his. So maybe I should just ask him what his servers are. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it if I was you. Okay. Absolutely wouldn't worry about it if I was you. And again, if, I, if you get into the text of whatever the new change is, they're trying to go after people that are calling consumers and getting consumers to buy something. Right. You know, we are not doing that in the real estate business. First off, um, are you doing agent outreach or are you direct to seller? So I'm doing agent outreach, working towards being direct to seller because there's more money in that. Yeah, and the thing... All right, so you're doing agent outreach or both? So I do agent outreach to Privy, so I don't need a dialer or a VA for that. Right, so you're actually contacting real estate agents who actually, by law, are publishing their phone numbers for right. commercial purposes. Right, so the but, law I'm also, but I'm law also doesn't moving a, towards a direct-to-seller. Law doesn't apply to them. Okay. Because they, the, the, uh, what state are you in? New Jersey. But I'm okay. I'm well, out of Florida. Hold on a second. You're in you're in one of them blue states. Um, <laughs> now, uh, the the laws apply everywhere. But bottom line is is you know every state makes their agents publish their phone numbers, whether it's an office line. Most people most agents use their cell phones, and they're right. publishing it for a commercial purpose. Right. So, so you can right call now, you can call them as much as you want. But I'm not worried with the agent outreach. I'm worried about the direct to seller. That was where my worry came in. Yeah. And again, you're not calling to sell them something. You're calling to buy something from them. Right. You know, uh, and again, just use a little common sense. Don't call before nine and don't call after seven. Okay. Sounds good. Because, you know, and, and most people are going to, you know, if you're nice about it, hey, listen, I was in the neighborhood. I saw your house. I'm looking to buy a house in the neighborhood. Would you consider selling? Yes. Right. Or no. They say no. Yeah. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. Who is going to get mad at that? Right, right. Yeah. So, um, I'm glad we you started off the conversation tonight about phone calls. Right. Um, does everybody have? Does anybody have my uh, tracking sheet? My no. my my daily planner. No. All right. Um. If you will, um, put your uh, email, your name and email. Um, in my, the, uh, my email in the chat. is paramountreg at gmail.com. Well, like I said, put it in the chat because I don't, wanna, I don't oh, want to. Oh, sorry. Screw it up. But what I'll do is I'm going to send you out my lead sheet or my, my daily planner sheet. Okay. And if you're not using one, you should. Okay. Um, but I want to just go through because I'm a big fan of leading by example. So I started this last week and I just want to evolve this because we're going to do this every this every Monday is um, just come in and, if, you know, we're going to answer anybody's questions. But if you're going to get on here, um, I would encourage everybody to do it is get on here and tell me how many phone calls you made, um, how many listings you got sent to you or agent said, I'm not, I don't have any listings. And then how, how many offers you made today. So I'll start. Um, I, uh, have a, I have two projects. Obviously, I'm out trying to find uh, houses to wholesale. 
but I'm also looking to buy a coin operated laundry right now with some partners of mine. Um, so what I did is I went out and bought a list of 677 uh, coin operated laundries that are not owned by corporations they're owned by individuals. Right. And today I called 25 of them. Okay. Nobody wanted to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, but, you know, I got 677 phone calls to make today. Um, I was the number 100. Um, and the thing that is slowing me down is that I bought it from a list vendor and this list vendor just completely screwed me. Um, I don't have a single phone number of an owner. So I got to call the public phone number. And, right. and the thing about it is, is half of the people are like, I'm not telling you who the owner is. I'm not telling you what their phone number is. I don't care why you're calling. And then hang up. Right. <laughs> uh, the other thing is I realized in the coin operated laundry space, um, about a third of the phone calls go direct to voicemail. It just says, oh, we're not available. Leave a message. This is a right. commercial business. Why is it not leaving a, why are they not getting a sales message to anybody calling a business? Because so I, so I'll tell you, you and I are along in the same wavelength because we're looking for coin operated laundry as well. Oh, cool. In New Jersey or Florida. Those yeah. are two that we'd be open to looking in. And the reason, so I speak to a friend of mine who's a business broker. And he told me, he says, coin laundries will not pick up because they don't have any direct consumer relationship. Like people come in, wash and go. There's no relationship building there. Do not ever take advice from that broker ever again. <laughs> okay. Ever. Lose his phone number. or Okay. Okay. That guy has no clue what he's talking about. Okay. I downloaded a TikTok that I came across over the weekend of a guy that has a membership program for his plumbing business. Oh, wow. If a plumbing business can have a membership program, do you think a coin operated laundry would for people oh, yeah. who come back every single week to wash their clothes? Yeah. How well back you that time you get one, one load off. Let me, you're right. Let me ask you a question. How how often do you call a plumber? Once in a year, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he had a membership program. So right. the thing about it is, is people, people that run businesses, they think that the, if they run it like everybody else, they're going to be successful. That is not the case. Right, right. What you got to do is you got to offer, today you got to offer people services. And wouldn't you, wouldn't you, I mean, or for example, I got a, um, I, I've got a, a drive through car wash that's about a mile from my house. Okay. I pay them $29 a month so I can drive that through that car wash every single day of the month if I want to. Yeah. And it's cool. I mean, when my car, I, I'm here in, in mid Florida and when we have the live oaks, you know, the live oaks are dropping all the pollen. Right. I'm sneezing like a son of a gun. I don't know why. <laughs> but that I swear to God, in the months of February, in the first two weeks of March, I drive through that car wash every single day to get that pollen off my truck. Right. Because I, you know, I've got a roll of toilet paper in a truck and I'm just constantly sneezing. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Think about it. With a coin operated laundry, you got people coming in once a week to want wash their clothes. Yeah. Well. Offer them, you know, what I'm going to do when, when we get our uh, coin operated laundry is um, I'm going to, you know, offer a membership program to them. Okay. Yeah. And just like you said, do one load, get, or de do 10 loads, get one free or something like that, you know? Right, right. Um, so the other thing is I've noticed that like 90% of these businesses don't have websites. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> they don't think they need it. But right. my whole thought was that we should have a website and we should have pick up and drop in a certain radius where they where they send us an email saying, hey, my load's ready to pick up and we can go pick it up. Not even an email. How about a text message? Yeah. But they can do it through the website. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. So anyway, I don't want to get off on, on, but I just want to let you know, I'm working on that commercial project that I made 25 phone calls today. Okay. Um, and then I switched over to my agent outreach and um, I went through, because it's the first of the month, I went into my podio 
and contacted all the people that um, I've you know made offers on properties and whether we did business or they fell through or whatever. I just called them back like, hey, and I want to tell you, um, did anybody go watch the in, the two and a half hour interview I did with Nate Harris? No. I did a two and a half hour interview with Nate Harris on Friday. Nate is doing um, a deal or two a week and he has made 50,000 dials in three months. Mm. Of all of the licensed realtors in Florida, he's spoken to half of them in three months. I think that's like 40,000 realtors. Wow. <clears throat> and the one thing that he hears from the people that he talks to, it, we learned, I learned, believe me, I've been doing this for 20 years. And when I run into somebody like Nate, and you see him in the in the Facebook group, the elite group, he posts, he actually posts his numbers every day. Wow. Yeah. That's why when I saw that, I'm like, this guy's consistent. He posts, he knows what his numbers are, and that's why he's getting deals. And he he gets people like, you know, how are you so successful? And he was telling about a kid that he that he's been mentoring last Friday, and this is all in the video, but he actually said the guy after making uh he said. I made phone calls this morning and the realtors were nasty to me. So I think I should stop. And Nate said, well, how many people did you call? And he yeah. made like five phone calls. Five. Okay. You are never going to get a deal calling five realtors. Right. So what I, what I did said to Nate was how many on average do you talk to a day? And he said 300. Wow. Well, the thing about it was, um, I had gotten away from batch, the batch dialer myself personally. Um, and, uh, I actually set it up again this morning. So he uses batch dialer to call agents. He calls, he uses batch dialer to call agents. He got, uh, Excel, he got an Excel spreadsheet of every single real, real estate licensee in the state of Florida. And he uploaded the, I'm, I'm just going to make up a number here, but I know it's around this number of all 40,000 realtors in the state of Florida. Wow. And he's called, he's already called half of them in three months. Okay. And now here's the thing. And we talked about this last week is all of us hate calling realtors that are nasty to us. And I right, made a, right. I made a post about this today in the group. What Nate does when he's talking to realtors, it comes down to this. Hey, this is, and I did it today. I switched my, I switched today. And this is what I found today. Hey, it's Mike, Mike Grady. And they're like, uh, oh yeah, you called me a couple, you know, like last month, right? I said, yeah. I said, I'm just, you know, just calling you to see if you've got any uh, um, listings that need work or an original condition or need work. Nope, don't have any. All right, talk to you later. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Or if they say, yeah, I got something. I'm like, all right, cool. Send it over to me. Bye. Right. Nate said when, when he's talking to people, he says it. Do you have anything in original condition or do you have, do you have any listings that need work? If they say no, it's a, it's less than a 15 second phone call. But when I'm calling, nobody's picking up and nobody's returning my call. Well, nobody's ever going to return your phone calls. Just but they don't pick that. up either. Yeah. And that's, and th that's the thing is um, that's why you want to use a dialer that's dialing three agents at the exact same time. How much is the batch dial, if you don't mind me asking? $139 a month. That's it? That's it. That's not bad. No. And then you gotta and then you gotta buy three lines at four dollars. It cost me 12 bucks. You have to buy what? Three numbers? Three phone numbers. Okay. For you four dollars a month. Yeah, it costs you four bucks a month. Okay, that's not bad either. Four bucks no. a month. Yeah. And see what it is then is all right. So I uh, so what I did is when I was using Astro Blaster, um, I have a database of like 400 agents that I've actually sent my buy box to. Okay. All right. So I downloaded a list of those. So that's one of my campaigns is I'm going to, um, those are the people that I've spoken to and I've sent over my buy box. All right. So I'm going to go through those and then I'm going to start uploading. Uh, and, and, and those are the, that, that, that I think it's 200 and, 275 or 300 realtors, not 400. I think it's like around 300 realtors that I've I've sent my buy box to. But because I was using 
Astro, and they only allow you to use Astro in one market, those are only realtors in Orlando. Oh. I also have a full list of all the realtors in Florida. Right. right, right. Upload Tampa. I'm going to upload Miami. I'm going to upload Jacksonville. I'm Where do you find this list of agents? Well, you're Astro Elite, right? Yes. Yeah, I you're. Uh, paid you're, them a lot of money. Yeah, your coach should have sent you a list. You sent me nothing. Really? Yeah, but I do have. I think I had asked for it, um, and I think I have. I have one, but I don't know. I have to check. Well, I know they'll give you up to three of them. So you call your coach back and say, "Hey, send me send me a list for this state and that state." Okay. Yeah. Um, Eagle. So yeah, I have I the key, 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 I have the Keegley contact list here. Yeah, um, you, don't, you don't want to be calling Keegley. <laughs> no, because I don't. Usually, they're like very excited, and then they're like, "We can't help." Well, they're excited because you're going to send them deals. Yeah, but then they listen to the values yeah, that, and the value. exactly. Yeah. And if you don't have they it, they well, something at fifty percent, and I'm like. In Florida, you can't get anything at 50%. You can. They're just few and far between. <clears throat> exactly. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think I have it. But, you, but you're right. You're, you're right. You'll, you, you'll hear me talk about this. I decided a long time ago to stay away from the guru states. And, it, you know, the gurus that we all know and love that will go, you know, unnamed. Um, yeah. They preach Arizona, Texas, and Florida. So. Yeah. You know, the sub two guy got 92,000 students in his Facebook group. All of them are focusing on three states. Yeah. And then it just becomes saturated and then it becomes harder. What's Jamil, what's Jamil got? 70, 80,000 students? Yeah. They're all he focused on three states. A million dollars, he says he's making a million dollars a month. And I can guarantee you that's not all from wholesaling. Uh oh. I think we stumbled into the truth. You know, a lot of it comes from Keegley, where he sits and people are sending him money because he's getting royalty. A lot of it comes from his mentorship program. It all adds up. And you know what? I salute him. He has built a uh, he's built an empire. Good for him. Oh, I have nothing against that. Don't get me wrong. I have yeah. nothing against that. I'm yeah. just saying that it's not. You know, if he's trying to say a million dollars from wholesaling, that ain't true. Yeah, not ten thousand dollars at a time, anyway. But to get back on track, yeah. your success will come off of your time box and tracking okay. how many phone calls you're making, how many agents are sending you deals. In other words, agent conversations were like, yeah, I got a listing. And then how many, how many offers you get out per day? Right. That was, that was the big thing I want to talk about. And like I said, when I, when I was talking to Nate, I, even I realized I got a, what it was is I was using batch and I, I was using it and then I hired a VA and then the, uh, I had the VA for a, come up, a couple of months and he wasn't producing enough to keep him around. And then when I let him go, I had gotten away from using batch myself. So I just, I didn't just never started up again. But then I realized after talking to Nate that I, I'm just not in this market. I'm talking, I'm not talking to enough people. Can I hear the interview that you did with Nate? Can you send the link? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, what I'm going to do is I'll send an email out afterwards. That would be great. Yeah. And I know Joe, Joe Figueroa is going to yell at me if I don't, if I don't do it. Okay. <laughs> send. Like, I don't know where you, where you uh, recorded that. I'm, I'm looking for YouTube. I'm looking for everything. All right. I'll send it out to everybody. Do me, everybody that's here, do me a favor, drop your email in the chat if you're not on my email list. Um, and I'll make sure that I send it out to everybody. But uh, yeah, it's a, it was, it was unbelievable. We actually calculated, you know how when you call up a realtor and they tell you a real nasty, like, no, I don't have any listings. Everybody wants, you know, discounted properties. Well, that phone call should take no more than three or five, three to five seconds. Now right. the difference between three to five seconds for a no and spending two minutes with a realtor talking about getting a listing sent to you. And then right. you multiply that by 50,000 dials. I think we calculated he's saving like 92 hours. Wow. I went, 
I'm looking at no's completely differently now. Yeah. Somebody tells me, I, I, I give him my pitch. Hey, it's Mike Grady. Do you have any uh, listings in original condition or need work? No. Bye. Hang up the phone. Do you follow up with them though every two weeks? Yeah. You do. Or, or at least once a month. Okay. But so, I, and go you're going to send out your, your daily planning thing, right? Because I want yep. to start using that. I mean, you, yep. this couldn't have come at a more perfect time because I'm just getting into the systems and I'm just getting everything. Like, it just seems to me like everything's coming into place now. So, you know, and I'm very like a goal person. Like, if I know I have to do these many calls. Then I have a goal and I will do it no matter what happens. If it's like, oh, I'll call, I'll call, I'll call, then nothing happens. See, what I do is like I get up and I, I generally start working about 7, 7, 30 in the morning and I'll do my real estate data research. Then I'll post it to the social media. Then I send out my email and I, I've got that hour and a half to our time block. Then um, the next thing I did this morning. Shut that up. Then the next thing I did is um, I sent out the uh, email for this uh, meeting tonight. Um, okay. And then for the next two hours from uh, 11 o'clock to one, I made coin operated yeah. laundry calls. And then after that, I grabbed a sandwich for lunch for 30 minutes. And then from basically two o'clock until five, I made seller calls to agents, agent outreach. But what I'm doing is I'm time blocking. So you didn't start out with agent outreach. So you, you, according to you, it's better to call them in the afternoon. Like, is it a preferred time? No, it's just the time I set aside today. Okay. No, I call them at any time. Because I know that in uh, like when an insurance, if you want to call a client with bad news, it's always better to do it after lunch because you know they've had a couple of drinks and they're much calmer. Well, that's a good point. Do you know why I do these on Monday nights? Yeah. I'll tell you. When I was in the corporate world, we used to have meetings at nine o'clock on Monday morning. Yes. All right. We and still went, do. After a couple of years, after uh, after a couple of years of being in the top, th usually their number one sales. I used to work in the newspaper business selling advertising. Newspapers oh. for anybody under 30 is uh, news printed on paper. Right. <laughs> you don't see those anymore. No, but... No. Um, after being the top salesperson, they used to bring me into meetings like, what can we do to make the business more efficient? And I said, the best thing to do is move your sales meeting to two o'clock or uh, to nine o'clock Tuesday morning. And they said, why? I said, you have your meeting on Monday morning. Everybody in that meeting is still thinking about what they did over the weekend. Right. And they haven't even started to plan out their day. Now on yeah. Tuesday, you've already had a full day of work. You're in work mode. And on Tuesday, you can report on you know, what happened last week Monday. and you can talk about what you're going to do for the rest of the week. The reason right. I schedule this for tonight is you've all worked all day today. And now we can talk about, all right, this is what I did today. And this is what I'm going to do for the next four days. Right. right. right? And that's why every week I'm going to ask everybody, what are your numbers? That's good. So yeah. you'll be like our accountability partner. That's and perfect. And I'm going to get up here every night, every Monday, and I'm going to tell you what my numbers are first. And we'll be your accountability partner. Exactly. Perfect. So that's um, that's what I wanted to go over tonight is just kind of talk about it's all, we're in a numbers game. We are. So what can I do? What can I do or what can uh, the group do to help you get a deal? So I actually have a couple of questions. Um so I'm in Tampa and the reason I'm in Tampa is because, you know, it was, I I have a couple of people who can, who buy properties. It was an easy market for me to enter. However, I also want to do deals that are closer to home in New Jersey. And I want to move into Jacksonville. We've been looking at Jacksonville a while. What are the, what is the criteria that you look at to enter a new market? So what kind of market research do you do? I don't worry so much about market research. Okay. That's not true. Yes, I do worry about market research. Okay. First <laughs> off, have you ever been to my website? Um, I have. Okay. So yeah, I, I have, but there's a lot of numbers and I don't do very well with numbers. Okay. 
So when we're talking about Jack, let's leave it at that. If you if you if you go to my website and you go to to the market data section, which I, that's what I do in the morning, is update a different market every morning, is I track um, home value in relation to the average home value in relation to the average income. And you don't have to do this because I do it for you. Okay. And every single market, believe it or not, with the exception of Memphis, Tennessee, or uh, not, uh, not Memphis, Tennessee, of uh, New Orleans. New Orleans is only overvalued, overvalued by like 9%, where yes. every other market is 20, 25, 30% overvalued. And what do I mean is you take a look at the average income in the city compared to the average home value. And obviously the, you, the home value, um, about... 33% of a household's income is designated to their mortgage, all right? Right. That's how they do conventional mortgages. Well, Actually, it's more than 30%, right? Yeah, right, but it should be around 30. It used to be right. 25, but, you know, who can trust the government? But yeah. bottom line is, is when the average person can't afford the average house, yeah. that market is not going to go up anymore because mm. nobody can buy the house. And that's what's happening right now. That's why prices went up and they dropped a little bit. And now they're going sideways like this because we're in the denial phase. And eventually what's going to end up happening is people can be like, man, I got to sell. And that's when they start dropping the prices. So you think that the prices are going to drop. They're not going to go back up because there's a lot of misinformation out there. People are like, oh, the house prices are going back up. Um, there's no supply, blah, blah, blah. Question. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Oh, less than a year. Okay. I've been doing this since 2002. Oh, wow. Okay. And okay. I am a, I'm a data geek and I yeah. follow the data. So when you go and you look at Jacksonville, you'll see the trends. And okay. we, in 2023, we're exactly where we were in 2008, uh, 15 years ago. Okay. And if you know the past, you can predict the future. Predict the future. Yeah. The difference is, in 2008, this country was $9 trillion in debt. Today, yeah. this country is $32 trillion in debt. Yep. The financial catastrophe that's coming is almost unavoidable. And then nobody's going to work. So all the commercial real estate people are not making any money. The, the market will... The, the country will go on. We'll, we'll survive this, but real estate is not going to stay up forever. Okay. It will come back down. It's cyclical. And if you go back and take a look at, since they started tracking real estate values, you know, way back in like 1910, it goes up, it pulls back. It goes up, it pulls back. It go, you know, it's just, a, it's a roller coaster. It is. You know, and that's, you know, we, we as wholesalers make money when it's going up, make money when it's going down. Right. Um, so that being said, the, the second thing I track is the cost of owning versus the cost of renting. And if memory serves, um, the cost of owning in Jacksonville is way higher than the cost of renting. Right. Well, rent rent values are going up everywhere because people cannot afford to buy anymore. Right. Exactly. Now, the reason I bring that up is because when I'm looking at a market, I'm looking at my exit strategies because we make the money when we buy the property, we real the, realize the money when we exit the property. Right. And one of the things that I like that I learned from Pace about three weeks ago is, is the pad split model. Is the what model? Pad split. Pad split? Pad. P-A-D. Pad split. Mm. So basically what you do is you can uh, get a, a three-bedroom, two-bath property that's not in an HOA neighborhood like in a, in a blue collar C neighborhood. And basically yeah. what that is, that's blue collar. And you would like, you know, you would drive through there at nighttime for her. Right. You feel safe enough to drive through there. Okay. And then what you can do is buy a three bedroom, two bath house. And what, what you can do is pad split will recommend contractors to you. All you gotta do is pay for them. They'll come in and take like the living room and break it and make it in two more bedrooms. And then what so people. The living room? Right, because what people are doing is they're not renting the house, they're renting a room. Huh. 
And what ends up happening is now that property will cash flow eight, nine hundred dollars a month. And pad split manages all the people. The only thing you're responsible as a landlord is making sure that the mortgage gets paid and making sure that any repairs that need to be done get done. Sure. Pet split is a company like uh, yeah. Evolve and Rabu kind of deal. Yeah. And it, and by the way, if you go into my data section, there's a uh, link to pad split at the bottom. You click on that and you can learn all about it. Okay. All the markets, um, all the markets that pad split in, I actually have a link in there because that's my strategy. That's one of my buy boxes for that market. So here's my question, though. When you want to sell the house, do you, you won't be able to sell it because there's no living room. That's a buy and hold strategy. Yeah, but eventually you want to sell your hold too, right? When it goes up enough and things like that. I'll be honest with you. If I got a property uh, that's kicking off $900 a month in rent, I'm never selling it. Okay. Ever. Okay. How, many, how, many nine, how many $900 a month properties do you need before you don't have to go to work anymore? Mm, about... I don't know. And there you go. How would you like to have ten thousand dollars coming coming in every month and not have to worry about it? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I understand what you're saying, but I was always told that you should work as a hedge fund where after seven years you exit the property, you sell it because you'll get a lot more money that way than you will on a rental. That's what I was told. So. But that's a traditional rental. Right, right. Pad Split, Pad Split is a company that identified a place in the market that of so the like sober eight, living facilities. Is that what this is? What's that? Is it like sober living kind of a deal? No, no, no. Nope. Okay. What it is is because home ownership has become almost unattainable for blue collar people. Yeah. Of the eighteen million houses that are for rent in America. About a third of those people can't afford to rent the whole yeah. house. Yeah, that's Instead true. Instead of renting a whole house, they're renting a room. Okay. Then they don't have maintenance. It's kind of like it's like it's like renting a condo. Mm. And that's all people want is they just want a bed, they want a desk, and they want a light. And they want to have a nice, safe place and they share the kitchen. And Pad Split says the average person stays nine months. Okay. And what, what was interesting is, you know, I'm reaching out to some of my realtors and tell them about the new buy box. And they're like, oh, my God, that'd be perfect for my friend, Karen, who's a teacher. She just moved down here from Chicago where she was making 80 grand a year in Chicago. And now in Florida, she's a teacher making thirty five thousand dollars a year. Right, right, right. She can't afford a house anymore. No, I understand. I believe that. See, she's like, man, when you set up this pad split thing, let me know because I got a friend of mine. I'll move in there. And she's a teacher. Uh, she's like an elementary school teacher. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but so it's the moral of the story is, sure, I'm tracking the numbers in a market. But when I'm looking at buying a property, I'm looking at my exit strategies. So my right. exit strategy could be pad split, could be wholesaling, or could be buy and hold. Right. By buy and hold, I mean Section 8. Okay. See, you're never going to hear me talk about renting to an individual like a family because people get fired. But when you got a Section 8 tenant, that's guaranteed money coming that's from the government. No, I, I, I like Section 8. They'll tell you that. There and you I go. Think holds because it comes from the government. It's a guaranteed check every day, every fifth of the month in your account. Right. So especially in Jacksonville, three different strategies. One is pad, my exit strategy is pad split. My second strategy is wholesaling, which means I got to get it at 40% of value because if you're not getting it, you know, because rehabbers are buying at 50%. So we got to get it at 40%. But can you really get a house in contract at 40%? All day long. In Jacksonville? Everywhere. I mean, I'm having a hard time finding houses at 70%. How many people are, how many agents are you talking to per day? Not a lot. There you go. There's the problem. 
Like when I talk to, when I find a house and I'll try to negotiate, they'll be like, we can go down 5,000 or 10,000. And I'm like, that's not going to help me. I, all right. So here's an example from some, from an agent. I, you know, called up today. Hey, you got any, you got any uh, fixer uppers or you got anything that's, uh, that's in original condition? Oh yeah, I got one. Send it over to me. She, they're asking uh, $275,000 cash. Need cash, $275 cash in 15 days. I'm like, all right. Oh, and she's like, I got the appraisal. I'm like, all right. Send out, she sent me the appraisal. Sent me pictures. Property's outdated. It's an elderly woman, outdated, needs, you know, kitchen, bath update, new paint, carpet, the whole nine yards. Right. Appraisal is two weeks old, 280000 I texted her back and said, uh, you're trying to sell a house that needs, oh, and the uh, the roof is 19 years old. So you'd have to put a new roof. I said, you're trying to, and, and, and the contract that they have is falling out. Mm. And it must be at the end of the listing because that's why she needs to get another contract that's going to close in 15 days, all cash. For right. seventy five thousand dollars on, on a house that appraised at two hundred or two hundred seventy five thousand, all cash in fifteen days, the appraisal two hundred eighty thousand. Right. I I sent her back. I said that's, that cash deal is never going to work. You're trying mm -hmm. to what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell a house that needs work at retail. That house mm -hmm. that house is competing with brand spanking new houses. So she appraised it at a renovated value? Yeah. Not a, the appraisal came in at 280, but yeah, the appraiser appraised it at 280 at, wow. at, at, at renovated. Yeah. And the reason renovated I had a, at 280, you can't pay 280. You would be paying 150, 170. Well, see, that's the thing is when you have a realtor who is been used to the market over the last five years, you can yep. price a property like that. Somebody would buy it banking on appreciation. Appreciation, yeah. Those days are gone, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what I tell them. I'm like, you're living in the past. And that's what I said. I said, I cannot. All right, so listen to what I said here. Okay. I said, you're try you what you're doing is you're selling a house that needs work at market. That's not going to work. I can right. pay full price with creative financing. And then I ask the question, have you ever taken a creative financing course at the association? Okay. What's the association? The Realtors Association. You know how they oh, get okay. they're continuing their CREs every two years? Okay. The REA Association. But instead of going, hey, listen, I got this creative thing and I can do this and I can do that and I can do subject to and owner finance, blah, 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 blah. That is like speaking Greek to somebody who's never taken a course. Right. So what I learned is ask them if they've ever taken a course at the association on creative financing. She said, no, but my broker has. So isn't she the broker? No, just an agent. Uh -huh. But then she asked her, her broker and the broker's like, no, because they've been, the broker has been trying to sell this thing for cash. Thinking that they that's what they've been able to do for the last five years, not realizing that ain't happening anymore. Okay. But, you know, so it, all that was done via text. I wasn't on the phone. I, that, that whole exchange took me maybe two minutes. Right, right, right. But I ran into that two hours ago where somebody tried to sell me, you know, tried to get me to take a property at market that needs $50,000 worth of work minimum. Yeah. I told him, I said, the best thing you can do is go back to that woman and say, you know, who's elderly and say, listen, your house isn't going to sell until you fix it up and you better need to hire some contractors to fix the roof, to put in a brand new kitchen, to put in brand new bathrooms, to paint the inside and out, new carpet. And I wouldn't even put in carpet. I'd put in hardwood floors nowadays. Yeah. That's the best advice that realtor could give. But what that realtor did is said, Give us the listing. We'll get it sold for you full cash. Right. And they did. They did. They did a disservice to this woman. Yeah. And that's what's happening in a flat market. Flat market. And 
all the realtors I talk to say the same thing. You're right. People going out and getting 7% mortgages and putting 20% down want perfect houses. Yeah. Everybody, everybody agrees. But again, we're in that denial phase where the market went up, 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 and then it pulled back a little bit. And now it's going sideways and sideways, and it's not going to go back up. It's going to drop off. So basically, the people who are selling right now are still thinking they're going to get the price when the market was up. This is the the denial phase. Yeah. Yep. And again, if you if you go back, and that's why I track, you know, every morning I track all those markets that I'm investing in. You see the numbers from 2006, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm looking 9, at 10, 11, 12. <laughs> So basically, the medium home value you're saying in Jackson was about three hundred and three thousand. That's what Zillow says. So if you type into Zillow, Jacksonville, Florida, medium home value Zillow, that's where I get that number from. Okay. And then okay. And here's the crazy thing I've noticed. I'm actually adjusting that number in the, yeah. just the the. Uh, in the three, all right. So I, I do one market a, a day, and basically the last three days, doing the July numbers, that number is actually ticking up. Right. So that so then they're not wrong when they say that house prices will go up. Well, here's the thing: if you're sitting on a three and a half, four percent mortgage, are you going to sell your house and go get a seven percent mortgage? No. That's why there's no inventory. But house prices are going back up. You just said that it was they're not. Ticking. They're not going back up. They're ticking up because the people that got to move are moving. But the vast majority of people are not, and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. Except you're going to have a buildup of people that have to move, and then eventually the dam's going to break, and they're going to go. All right, we're just going to have to cut the price, get rid of it. Okay. One of the other things that I do every Saturday morning is I actually download um, for Poe County here. The foreclosures. Okay. And foreclosures are ticking up. Right. Now, here's the thing. People don't realize, and I did an article about this three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. The moratorium on foreclosures and moratoriums on evictions in California expired. And yes. there's like 14 or 15 states that actually follow California. Uh, that expired a long time ago. Officially just, just expired three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Uh, I know in Texas it was really bad because they were showing us videos of these people being dragged out of their houses, and I was like, "Oh my God, that is sad." Our, let's not get into the political, we, you know, but we got to do with the reality of our government told people that they didn't have to pay their mortgage for two years, right? And dumb people were like, "Well, that's free money." <laughs> it wasn't free money. Yeah, and. Uh, what's happening now is, you know, people are trying to call up the bank and work out, you know, do mortgage mods. Well, look at it from the point of view of the banker. This person hasn't made a payment in two years. Do we seriously think they're going to make payments? Yeah. So they give them the mortgage mod. And even if you look at the numbers, 90% of mortgage mods fail. Right, right, right. All it does is delay it. So one more question, um, and I know I'm, um, you know, monopolizing your time, so sorry. You're not. But, but um, have you ever worked with tax deeds? Because I spoke to somebody yesterday, and he's an astro too. His name is Sean Hammond. I don't know if you've ever talked to him. Nice guy. Very helpful. Um, very, very helpful. Um, he, he, he told me that we should go after tax deeds for two reasons. One when the tax deed is not paid for like three months or four months, it automatically goes into auction. And the auction date is already set for 45 days or 60 days out, depending on the county. He says, don't go in for tax remediation because that is, they give you time to pay back. You have to wait one year before you can do anything to the house. But a tax deed, like Florida is a tax deed state. And these people owe like, 30,000, some owe 20,000. And if they can't come up with that kind of money, then the house goes on to auction. And you can actually get it for like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Or you go straight directly to the owner and you can 
tell him that look you owe this much on the taxes i will pay off your taxes and i'll give you 40000 60000 100000 depending on you know his motivation to sell and get the house and he says houses usually in you know like Tampa area orlando are like 300 400000 so if you can get it for like 60 to 100000 dollars you're gold so um, i wanted to know if anybody's worked with tax deeds besides okay. Sean. every state is different Okay. All I can, something specifically Florida. All I can speak to is Florida. Right. And even in, in Florida, each county is different. Okay. The way it works in Polk County and Volusia County, the two counties I've lived in in Florida. Right. Yes. When somebody doesn't pay their taxes, you can actually go buy that tax certificate. So in other right. words, let's say that their taxes were $1,800 and they didn't pay their bill you can go pay that bill and get the tax certificate. And you're, right. and what you're going to do, though, is you're going to bid against several other people trying to buy that certificate. So the right. interest rate will start about 18 to 19%. And then you as an investor are going to get bid against other investors. And you're going to bid that, you're going to bid that interest rate down. Now, that being said, most of the counties have now set up their auctions to be automatic. They do it electronically online. Yeah. So you're going up against banks that are investing 50, 60 million dollars automatically. Okay. And if they get anything above 2%, they're thrilled. Right. But here's my so, question. Why don't we go directly to the seller, the owner of the house? Hang on. Let me let okay. me finish. So what I'm okay. saying that that's one of the downfalls. Yes, you can get the screaming deals, but it's extremely time consuming. Okay. You're going to fail a lot. Okay. All right. Second, in Florida, in Volusia County, and I know, and I know Polk po County, if the person doesn't pay the mortgage, or the, not the mortgage, the uh, tax certificate that you purchase, if they don't pay the next year's taxes, that certificate goes up for sale. If you buy both of them, you can foreclose on the house and the primary mortgage is in second position. Okay. So bottom line, boys and girls, nobody actually owns real estate in America. The government owns it. You're just renting it. Yeah. You don't pay the taxes. Doesn't matter. The government will take it from you. But in the way it works in Volusia County and, and Polk County, Florida, if you buy both certificates, then you can, for, you can foreclose on the property because you you you've taken the position of the county. Okay. Now that's everything I know about tax deeds. I've never done it. I've tried to do it, but I got so frustrated with losing to the banks. I'm like, oh, it takes too much time. <laughs> now that being said, I do know some smart lawyers that um, have actually gone out and um, people that live on the intercoastal. They figure, you know. Because, you know, you know what riparian rights are. No. All right. So when you live on any body or body of water, your property actually extends into the water. Right. All right. Well, you got to pay tax on that chunk. A lot yeah. of people are like, "I'm not paying tax on my property that's underwater." Well, what these lawyers did is they went out and bought the tax certificates on that plot of land. Well, that plot of land just happened to have that rich person's boat dock. <laughs> they foreclosed that piece of property and then went went to the owners and said, your $300,000 boat, get it off my piece of property. I own your dock. Or, uh, I'll charge, or I'll charge you $250 a month to rent my boat dock. Oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> Those those people were not happy. <laughs> that was brilliant, though. But that's what lawyers when lawyers know the game and they know the rules. They know the game. I've been trying to contact some divorce lawyers because you know when people are getting divorced, it's sad. But they all want to get rid of their house cheap, quick. It means two to... the, it means two of the you know four pillars of motivation, right? Timeline and. Don't get me wrong. Divorce is a great way to pick up discounted properties, but you got to have thick alligator skin because those people are mad. <laughs> she hates him. He hates her. And they, 
you will not believe what people will do to each other just because they're mad. And yeah. I always say to myself, how can two people who promise to love each other for the rest of my li- rest of their lives hate each other that much? Yeah. My cousin got a house in Texas that that was comped out at 480,000 with a pool massive it's like a mansion it's a McMahon, you know McMansion kind of deal for $80,000 because that's what they owed on the house and they didn't want to deal with each other they hated each other and they said we don't want to do anything just give me enough money to pay this damn house off and that's, right. Right. And that's 80,000 and she yeah. said yes he said fine here's the chart <laughs> and as wholesalers, that's the business we're in. We're in the business of fixing problems, whether they're yeah. emotional, financial, or physical. Yeah. Physical being a rundown house with deferred maintenance, emotional, probate, divorce. And then there, has to be a, there has to be a place where we can download a list of divorce lawyers. <laughs> yeah. You can go to, you just go to the, um, uh, um, the Florida bar or the New Jersey bar. Oh, okay. Go to the bar and just sort by the type of law that they do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, by the way, bonus, they also publish their cell phones. Oh, nice. (laughs) That's just a little tip. That is a bonus. (laughs) At least they do in Florida. And boy, oh boy, do they get pissed off when you call them on their cell phone. How'd you get this (laughs) number? You're a lawyer, aren't you? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Last time I checked. State of Florida makes you publish it. Okay. Yeah, they. I can't even tell you how many times I've called up lawyers and they threaten me with a lawsuit. And I'm like, what for? Yeah. <laughs> you can threaten me all you want, dude, but I'll no. make you some money. Why don't you? Why do you want to sue me? I'll make you money. <laughs> Divorce lawyers have to deal with mad people every hour of their workday. But they make a lot of money doing it. Yeah. Well. After you get yelled at, don't you want to yell at somebody else? Yeah, that's true. That's. I actually had a friend. I actually years ago was dating a a woman who went uh, and she left. She was a um, district attorney. Oh. Okay. And you know, obviously, that's a you know, government employee. And you're not going to make a whole yeah. lot of money, you, you know, being money. a district attorney. She went and you know, this law firm lured her away from her government job because she was making all this money being a divorce lawyer, and she lasted six months. She went back to her government job because she's like, I don't want to be around pissed off people all day. Wow. Yeah, divorce is ugly. It's ugly. It the is, only- but I feel with and- the lawyer, right? I mean, he'd want to get rid of the property too so that he can move forward on his settlement and get his money. And the only, you're thinking logically, the only thing that breaks my heart more than divorce is probate. You just cannot yeah. believe what brothers and sisters will do to each other over money. Really? Oh, God. I thought that would be an easier, easier way to get it. Let me put it to you this way: I, uh, uh, in some counties in Florida, they don't, they don't have the information online. You actually got, got to go down to the courthouse and pull each individual file. Volusia County is that way. And so, wow. so you know, once a once every week or once every two weeks, I'd, I'd take a couple hours. I'd go over there and I'd pull files. Right. And I pulled, I pulled a file, and there was a check stub in there that went to the only heir of this woman who had passed away okay and it was a check for like seven hundred thousand dollars and there was a note from the executor to the grandson that got the seven hundred thousand dollars that said it would have been nice if you had spoken to your grandmother in the last 10 years oh that's sad she had no one else to give it to so she left this kid who never spoke to her seven hundred thousand dollars and I'm not kidding, saying kid. It, it, this person was like 28 years old. Yeah, that's sad though, you know. And that's what I'm saying. The only thing worse than divorce is, is you just can't believe what brothers and sisters will do to each other. And I can tell you, in all the probate deals that I've done, the heirs want one of three things. Microwave, TV, and a check. You want like the personal pictures? You want the knickknacks? You want all that stuff? Oh, guns. They also want guns. So microwave, TV, and what else? You a check. Oh, a check. And, they, and then if there's any guns. Yeah, they want the guns too, yeah. but that's it. I mean, it's, I, 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 I had, uh, I had, uh, I did a probate in January. That's how I met Jamil. Um, and the woman said to me, "Hey, uh, you know, it was the, it was the daughter, and she was really emotional. And she, you know, the house is full of furniture. She's like, you want to buy the furniture?' I said, you know, this is outdated. Nobody's going to want this. 
So she's like, yeah, take whatever you want. I'm just, you know, I said, listen, part of what I do when I buy your house is I'll give this to the Salvation Army or I'll give it to, you know, Catholic Charities or something like that. Which one right. would you like me to give it to? And she said, I don't care. I said, all right, well, you know, we'll, we'll give it to the Salvation Army or Catholic Charities, whichever one wants to pick it up. And that's what we do with probate properties. Right, right. I but, have a list of probate properties that I can have to start marketing. Yeah. And and by the way, if you're anybody that's listening, if you're gonna go after probates, be a human being. These people are going oh, through a terribly emotional time. Yeah, and it's not just about the house. Um, yeah. when I went over there to do my walkthrough in the house, I spent 45 minutes helping her take dick knickknacks down and pack them up. Okay. And the thing about it was, I've done a lot of these and just be a human being. And oh, this particular woman actually sent me an email after closing, thanking me for buying her house. Oh, that was nice. But that's because you gotta, you know, you gotta, uh, you just gotta be, you just gotta have compassion for these people. Yeah. Now, divorce lawyers, no compassion. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, I understand. But I was thinking about it because look, when two people hate each other, their biggest asset is the house. They want to get rid of the house and get the money. Yeah. Just you know, and a lot of times you will get it at just the balance of the mortgage. But like I said, just be a human being when you're dealing with people that are emotionally distressed. Yeah, no, I understand. Look, I have a disabled son, so I, I understand uh, emotions and empathy completely. Yeah, my mother has a disabled son, too. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my son's, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's 30 years old, but he's like oh. a three-month child. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, we do everything for him. He's in diapers. He doesn't talk. He's in a wheelchair. He's legally blind. He has epilepsy. He has cerebral palsy, mental retardation. He has clonus where he has no control of his muscles. Um, among the few things that I can remember right now. Well, I am going to say a little prayer for you tonight. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I'm Catholic. Sorry, it's just my thing. That's okay. You know, it doesn't matter. So what a else? Prayer is a prayer, right? What else? What can I do to help you get a deal? Um, nothing. I mean, you've answered my questions. I just have to work at, you know, be consistent in reaching out to the agents more often, um, reaching out to more agents. And um, hopefully that will do it. I'm going to email Jamil's support team and have them send me Florida, New Jersey. There you go. Um, agent list. And I don't know, you know, I mean, they say three, but I don't know what third state to go for. Do you have any recommendation? Um, I wouldn't Texas. say Arizona. I wouldn't say Florida. I wouldn't say Texas. What I would probably say would be Tennessee. Well, tech, Florida I'm doing already. So Florida, right. uh, New Jersey, and then Tennessee. North Carolina, South Carolina. Okay. Not Tennessee. Georgia. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. New Orleans. Okay. Yeah. Focus on secondary markets. Birmingham, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Uh, Birmingham, I mean, Mobile, Alabama is beautiful. You were there uh, yeah. when you went up to Pensacola. Yeah. You, know, you can drive down. Yeah. It's driving distance and it's gorgeous. I mean, the beaches there are just awesome. The other thing, I just published an article yesterday that Arkansas is very affordable. It is. So you might want to consider looking at Arkansas. Okay. But I don't know any buyers there. That's a chicken and egg thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, the only do you I want to go get buyers, buyers before you get would... deals or do you want to get deals before buyers? That's up to you. But the only place I could go find buyers would be Facebook. No, Privy. Privy. Privy will find buyers on Privy. Nobody Privy. showed you how to find buyers on Privy. No. Jamil's Nobody got some. How to use Privy? Period. You don't know how to use Privy? Period. No, oh I just God. know how to go put in an address and find the house. That's it. Well, Jamil's got a gazillion videos on that. That's where I learned how to do it. But I'd be more than happy to make you one. Okay, that would be awesome if you don't mind. No problem. 
All right, so I'm going to email you the time box. Yes. And a privy tutorial. Yes. All right. Oh my I, God, that would make life so much easier if I can find buyers on Privy because then you know they're genuine buyers who are actually looking. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'll do that if, for you if you promise to show up next Monday night and show me your numbers. Absolutely. Cool. Done deal. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Who's next? How we doing, man? Is this Ralph? Yes, sir. How you doing? Good, man. I can't see it. Oh, hold on one second. Hey, Joe, thanks for putting those links in there, what I'm talking about in the chat. Yeah, you're my problem. Joe. You're my uh, unofficial moderator. <laughs> yeah, any questions you need, I, I, I've got a. I can go ahead and I'm going to post the uh, Paces contract in here. Cool. Purchase the sale. Yeah, I, I. He just sent out an email this morning with a whole uh, contract package. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I, I'll, I'll send it to you later. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll just wait until I get it because in case he updated his purchase and sale. Yeah. And then I'll post it on here next week. Okay, cool. All right, Ralph, you want to talk about 609 Ash Lawn Court in Nashville? Yeah, we can talk about that. Hold on. Now, I'm switching to my computer real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, You're so basically right it's so much. What'd you say? I said you're very narrow right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this deal is from a uh, a realtor that owned the property. Okay. So is a friend of um. Well, he's a realtor of my best friend. And hold on. All right. All right. So the deal that we're talking about right now that you sent me earlier is realtor owned. Oh, I lost him. All right, Farah. So here's a real life deal in uh, Nashville. Yes. Okay. That's sounds correct. good. I'm here. So Ralph contacted me a couple days ago asking for help. Um, and I uh I think I pointed him away from a bad deal up in Massachusetts. Correct. Um, but then he found this pretty sweet deal. Uh ARV of 340 to 350. So I'm using the 340 number and I'm trusting you on that for now. Yeah. Um, you said you, we can acquire this at 165. Correct. That's base. He came to me with that. Deal. He's like, hey, ask Ralph. He will take this Um, because he he's stretched thin right now. I think he has a few projects and he's just trying to, to get his money out of this one and just use it for something different. My brother, that's 48%. Did you hear that, Farah? Yeah. The uh, the acquisition on this is at one hundred and sixty five thousand. The ARV is three forty. And you got this from Privy through an agent. Ralph, how'd you get it? Um, just through a friend. A friend. Um, uh, my friends has a realtor. The real I talked to the realtor before when they were closing on my friend's house. I said, Hey, I'm I'm interested in getting a real estate market in the area. Um, whenever you got something, you let me know. And um, I guess he has a property that he was trying to get rid of because he has he's stretched thin right now. So he just sent me that he said, Hey, you can get this one at this price, and uh it'll be a full renovation at that price. So my question I asked him was, um, do you have the contractor that can do it at the price that you quoted at? Basically. Oh, okay. okay. So okay, so you didn't have a contract to send over to him. No. Ah. All right, my brother. I'm gonna have to send you over my contract. Correct. Uh now I'll, I'll go ahead and send, please send it to me too. Okay. But I mean I'm gonna it's, I'm fair, I'm sending you a blank one. Him, I'm gonna actually fill it out. Okay, yeah, blank one's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, Ralph. Let uh let me ask you.
Do you know what the seller's name is? Um, not on top of my head, but I I can get that real quick. Okay, and then do you have a LLC or do you just want to put this in your own name? Um, this one would be on my own name, and uh, I will do the LLC at the next week or end of the month or something like that. Okay, all right, no big deal. Um. Can you afford a uh, $1,000 EMD? Yes. Okay. That's all. That's all we need to do. Get I'll We'll get that written up. Uh, I don't want to take up the time to do it now because I want to answer questions, but I'll get that written up for you, send it over. And um, Do you have a, uh, a way to send it over electronically? Yeah, I, I can do the, um, what do you call it, the way that, the you, thing? Yeah, I use a uh, right signature. Whatever whatever service you use works. Okay, sounds good. But uh, what I'll do is I instead of sending over a uh, a PDF document because obviously you got to put in the seller's name, um, you got to find out whatever that is. I'll just send you over the Microsoft Word version. Okay, that so works. Then, so then you know you put it you put in the seller's name, download it as a PDF, upload it to your electronic thing, and then you know put in the places assigned. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, man. Cool. What else? Um. Well, well. I mean, my only thing is, let's say I get this under contract and uh, everything. I don't. I do not have funds, or you know, that's that would be where I'm limited at. Well, see, it. here's the thing: you're never going to own this property. Correct. You're getting it under contract at forty eight percent. We can easily wholesale this at fifty. Now it's not going to be a gigantic spread, but you may get somebody that'll take it at fifty-five. Yeah, seven percent—that's not a bad. That's you know, seven percent of three forty—that is not a bad gig. Gotcha. And then you know, we get it under contract. We'll help you find a buyer, and then uh, we'll uh, just assign it to that buyer. And then uh, probably twenty-one days later, they'll send you a check. All right. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> it's really a very easy business once you once you learn it and you get it. But the, the trick is, is here's a live one like we were talking about with Farah. Is this one right now is at forty eight percent? If you could get it five thousand dollars lower, that's five thousand dollars in your pocket, man. Gotcha. The it's worst easy. that the worst they could say is no. One of the things that I tell everybody when you're making offers, go for no expect to get a no if you don't get a no you left money on the table you can never negotiate well i shouldn't say never rarely can you negotiate down you can always go up but you can rarely go down also if you don't get a no that means you're paying them too much there you go so anyway what i would do, what i would do and i'm going to fill it out this way for you is offer Offer 160 just to see what happens. Yeah. If they send out, well, no big deal. You go back to 165. If they say yes, or they might counter and go 162. Gotcha. At the end of the day, just remember, it's a game we play. Enjoy the game. Sounds good. I'm ready for the game. <laughs> All right. What else can I do to help you? That'll be all. That's it. All right. I'll send over that those names if I, as soon as I find it. Maybe you'll just fill it out. It'll be yeah. easier. Yeah, if you can find out uh, tonight, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. You all done? You all done? Yeah. I got. I mean, I got nothing right now. All right. All right. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Do you have my time box? I do not have that. I will send that to you, sir. Thank you. And uh, then next week, come back and then tell everybody how many phone calls you made. Yes, sir. How many phone calls you made? How many agents did you speak to? How many offers did you make? Okay. And if that number is north of zero, life would be good. Yes, sir. If it's, more than, if it's more than my number, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> that means I got to work harder. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I don't try to take life too seriously, man. Yeah, hey, that's the way to be. Yeah, this this has got to be fun. There's too many miserable people that I talk to all day long. So that's why I make it fun. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. All right, my brother. Great, uh, great questions, and I'm I'm glad I could help you out. And let me know if you need anything. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. There's Alexis. What's up, Alexis? Hello. Hello. I can't. Oh, now I can. Hey, Mike. Hey, man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good, brother. Hey. I'm good. You? Are you a long haul trucker or something? Nice, nice, man. Hey, uh, when did I ask? Uh, yeah, eighteen wheeler. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drive eighteen wheeler, man. Um, but I'm I'm on the phone all day, for the most part. Uh, whenever I can. Um, so, I actually I spoke with you, um, last week about a deal that I was working on, and it's a sub two situation, hmm. and I wanted to ask your opinion, because uh the sub two guy I'm I'm working it with. He says it's a little bit of a difficult one because the interest rate on that property is at eight percent. Mm. That is eight percent. So it's a so it's a tough one. So he said he was willing to take on it, like he'll buy it himself. Um, but you know, like the money would be so tight that that be able to offer the the seller anything, you know, like. He'll just probably just take it over. And I told the agent, and the agent said well, that the, the, they can't really work with that. So I wanted to get your opinion. You know, like, do you think you'd be in the same position, too, with an interest rate that high? Interest rate is just one um, variable. I mean, having that low makes it a lot more valuable. Um, but the question becomes, then, um, do you know what the balance is on a mortgage? Um, it's around a hundred and a hundred and thirty three, and then with the arrears, it's like a hundred and forty or something like that, in total. All right. Um, you said um. Uh, All right, so there's only like seven thousand in arrears. Um, let me. You know, I'm actually looking for the email that they sent me. You know what the AR? You know what the ARV is in the property? Yeah, man, it's a two one. It's a it's a tiny house. It's a I got about a one sixty five of ARV because it's a two one, very small, like seven hundred square feet, seven. Like seven fifty square feet. You know what the uh, mortgage payment is? The PITI is. Yeah, it's super high too. It's uh, yeah, it's it's almost seventeen hundred. It's uh, sixteen ninety nine. And where's the property located? In Mesquite, Texas. Okay, so I finally found the payoff statement. Uh, so principal they owe one thirty three, six ninety nine, and then um, let's see, and then it says accurated interest as of July seventh, it's twelve thousand three hundred sixty nine. So in total they owe. One hundred and forty nine thousand seven hundred and five, and in arrears they only owe about big collection fees. It's four hundred. It's not that much. Is around three thousand four hundred in arrears.
unfortunately, on this one, I don't think you're going to get seventeen hundred dollars to rent out a two bedroom, one bath anywhere. Yeah, that's that's what the other sub two guy was saying. He was like, "Nah, man, there's you. First of all, you're not going to be able to do like a long long term tenant. Um, Airbnb is like too risky." And the only thing that he thought of was to sell it on a wrap. And, you know, that's, I mean, that's also another risk because you got to, you'd probably be have to sell it, be selling it like a 10% to a wrap buyer. And pad split doesn't work because there's just not enough space to add more bedrooms. Oh, very tiny, man. Very, very tiny house. Yeah, very tiny. Why in God's name would somebody pay that much money for that tiny of a house? I don't know if, if um, that a, a little bit of the story that I know is that it was a couple. Um, I guess maybe they're like, I don't know, I don't know their age to be honest. Um, but the husband passed away in the middle of the renovation. Ah, so they were renovating it while they were living in it, and um, and the husband passed away and I guess the lady maybe it was too much for her so she just moved on to uh to a one-bedroom apartment and you know decided that she doesn't want to deal with the property anymore like she doesn't want to continue to fix it up she just wants to sell it but I mean the ARV is so low and she owes so much that there's absolutely nothing she can do yeah um at seventeen hundred dollars, you're not going to get it for a two bedroom, one bath. You're not going to get a renter higher than that. I mean, I'm yeah. probably above market to begin with. And then, one for sure. And then, are you telling me that the reno is only half done? The reno, yeah. Um, I mean, you can say it's probably about seventy percent done. It needs paint, um, framing. It needs uh the cabinets on the on the what's it called on in, in the kitchen. But I mean they did tile, they did tile flooring on the kitchen, they renovated the restroom. Um just needs I think it needs like two doors. So the house itself, I mean it doesn't look too bad, but you still gotta put in at least another like ten, fifteen thousand in renovation. And that puts you right up at one sixty five. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take a hit the ejection handle on this one. Yep. Hard one. Yeah, yeah. And that, that sub to guy, he said he was willing to take it, but there's gonna be no payoff to the seller or nothing, just he's willing to risk it to sell it on a on a wrap. But I told the agent and she was like, Oh, you know, like we can't do it. Um it's, I mean the seller's gonna walk away with nothing. She said she was going to work, is that she had another investor interested in doing sub two, but he's probably going to come to the same conclusion anyway. So something, either he's going to make, either another person's going to make a bad investment or the agent's going to have to come back and and work with us. I don't know, uh, either one. A hundred percent, man. Um, but yeah, man, I think, I think that's it. I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Um, I texted you the other day. I got your link for the cities that you work with, that you buy in. Right. Um, I know, and uh, I know Tallahassee is not one of them. The, the, that's not somewhere where you invest, right? I didn't see that on your. Unless you can find me a duplex or a triplex. Mm. I got I uh I got an investor friend of mine up in Jacksonville. His wife just got elected to be a state senator or representative, one of the two. But they're they're looking to buy a duplex or a triplex up in Tallahassee. Okay, okay. Duplex or triplex. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Um and also I did want to ask you, Mike, um do you do you do dispo in Texas, like in DFW? Yeah, as well. I do have buyers in Texas. Okay, because I have a property that I'm getting under contract on Wednesday. Um, it's in Richardson. Okay, and I got some. I got some feedback from Kigley 
but it wasn't very positive, I guess. Um, so I wanted to, I mean, the guy, the, the agent's going to lock it up anyway. And then, um, I don't know, either, either he'll back out of it because he's going to lock it up under his name. And then I'm just going to help him sell it. And um, so that's the way we're going to play it out. And I wanted to see if maybe you, what you thought of the, of the ARV on this one, because it's a little tricky. ARV seems high, but it's a little bit smaller than, than some of the comps. All right. Well, yeah, once you get it locked up, send me the address and then I'll, I'll do my thing. All righty. All righty. But man. yeah, but I, uh, I, I do have buyers that are buying in Dallas, but like everybody else, you got to be, you know, 50, 55% of ARV. Okay. For us to be able to wholesale and make some money, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so there's a little bit of spread, meat on the bone, no doubt. Um, man, I think I think that's all I had for now. Okay. I think so. I think so. If I if I come across anything that's buy and hold, um, I know that agent. Remember that property I texted you, where I sent it to you at one forty five or something like that in right. Dallas. Right. And you told me that they had a two two percent mortgage rate. Yeah. On it, and it seemed like a shame to to throw away. Yes. Um. So the agents, I get, I guess he's gonna keep it past his inspection period, or unless he got a super long option period, because he still has it under contract. And he was asking me if he wanted to just at least put in an offer, even if it wasn't at that asking price. But um, is that something that you'd be interested in, or would you rather just pass on it and see if he if he lets it go? Hang on a second. I'm looking. I'm trying to find the text. Do you want me to send you like a one text right now so that way you, it can come back up? Yeah, was was that the Maryland Ave? Yeah, that one. Three bedroom, one bath, nine sixty square feet. Um, but uh, it had a two percent mortgage on it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what it said. I saw it too. Yeah. The mortgage rate was two. Yeah. The mortgage rate is 2.8%. Yeah. That would be, that would be such a better deal if we could do a sub two on that one. Okay. 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 I mean, he's on a contract, so I doubt he can, I mean, unless he can negotiate himself into a creative deal, but, um, but, but I, you, I doubt it. How much time has he got left on that contract? Um, I would need to ask him because I was communicating with him right now through the text. And um and I can I can get back to him and ask him, see when he's closing on it, if he's willing to share the details. Yeah. Of uh, or when he's he's gonna close because he doesn't have a he says he doesn't have a, a set closing date that he can set it up for whenever. So I feel like negotiation, even he's under contract, maybe he has ways to extend it or if somebody wants to come in and buy it maybe you know like of course the seller's gonna sign the contract if they get all their cash right but right. Uh, yeah i can ask him i'll ask him and see um uh, and see what he says see how long he has on it um have you got my lead sheet uh no i don't think so all right i'll email you my lead sheet all righty and basically, basically what that is what that is on my lead sheet, it asks all about the property, but then in the lower right-hand side, it has a box for uh, all the mortgage information. So balance, okay. uh, PITI, what the rate is and what the arrears are. Now, obviously this one's okay. got no, no arrears, but knowing what the PITI is, um, you know, it's a little bit, the price is a little bit too high to buy and do a, a section eight on it. But if we could do a sub two on that thing, you know, get this seller some cash, um, we could probably make that work as a buy and hold. Yeah, I agree. 
I agree. Sub two would be beautiful for this one. I'll if talk to the yeah. If rent ahead. rents, if rent, if if market rents are fifteen hundred to sixteen fifty, I bet you section eight's like fourteen hundred, thirteen fifty. Oh, okay, okay. So section eight would pay under under market value. They they generally do not a lot, but they generally do. From what I've seen, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you say, you know, you analyze data, so it's best to, to go with, with what the numbers say. Exactly. But yeah, this one fits. But yeah, it would be such a shame to pay this off and put a high dollar mortgage on this thing when we could take it over to 2.8%. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do with this uh, with this guy, see if maybe we can negotiate something. Um, maybe, maybe once he lets it go, you know, um, give him a little compensation or something, and uh, finder's fee, yeah, and see, fee. see, yeah, finder's fee, yeah. Okay, okay, my God, I'll I'll communicate with him and I'll let you know what happens then. All right, we'll do, brother. Thank you. See ya. Cool. All right. So that was Alexis. That was uh, Ralph. Rich White, how you doing, man? What's up, Mike? Good, man. Doing, All man? good. Hold on a second. I'm going to let my windows up here so I can hear you. All right. Where are you driving to? Oh, man, I'm on the way home now. I'm on the way back home now. I, um... Hey, you, you, uh, you buy anything in the Chicago market? Oh, I have forayed to uh, do a deal in the Chicago market. I got one going right now. Um, and believe it or not, I got a subject to deal that I'm working on in Chicago. Property's probably where probably it's a two bedroom, one bath. Uh, excuse me, three bedroom, one bath, I believe. Anyway, um, that's worth 150 taking over the mortgage at uh. Ninety-seven thousand, um, and I was working with a sub two student who I needed the sub two student to bring sixteen five uh, cash to close to get to the seller, and they said they structured their deal so that the seller would only get seventy five hundred, which really pissed off the seller. Okay. But then they were gonna that, but I had put in uh, a twenty thousand uh, dollar assignment fee on it. So they offered to give her the twenty, uh, a twenty six thousand dollar note. Well, I went back to her with it, and she didn't want that. So I asked them, I and they were going to give me a five thousand dollar assignment fee. So I got thinking about it, and I said, "Well, could you give if if they gave her the seller my five thousand dollar assignment fee, plus the seventy five hundred, that gets them up to almost sixteen thousand." Okay. And then I would take the. $26,000 note, which would be paid off in seven years as my assignment fee. Okay. And they originally said yes. And then after they thought about it, they're like, oh, we can't, we can't do that because, you know, our notes are not transferable. Well, first off, it's not a live note. So <laughs> you can write a note to do anything. And then, right. and then they're like, oh, we consulted with the sub two community and uh, nobody pays that kind of money for uh assignment fee. And I'm like, so what you're doing is you're changing the offer for right. what you wrote down just because you're too fucking cheap to pay me. Right. Seven right. years from now. Right. See, now what I would have done is I would have got that $26,000 note and I'd have gone out and sold that note for 50 cents in a dollar and still made 13 grand. Right. Yeah, they just weren't. Um... But I'm like. You went into the community, the sub two community, told them how I set up the deal, and they're like, "Oh no, that's too much to pay a wholesaler." Yeah. What the it's hell that, is that? It's that scarcity mindset thing that um that Jamil is always talking about. This is a sub two student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's outrageous, man. And I guess Pace has got some rule that you can only give the seller ten percent, no more than ten percent cash at close. Uh, I don't see why it would make a difference. 
Because if you limit the amount of cash it closes, that means uh, the wholesaler gets nothing. Yeah, I guess. Hey, hey excuse me a second. Go ahead. Mike, I got... Go ahead. Well, no, never mind. I'm good. All right. Yeah, so... so anyway, yeah, so... That's, that's the live deal I got going on in Chicago. Now you want to hear the cool thing? What's that? When, when this when this sub two student was backing out on their offer, I got a full price offer. A uh, guy gonna you know because what I needed was thirty six k uh, at cl- cash at close to pay the seller their their sixteen five and then my assignment fee. And uh, yeah. the guy said I'll take the property. So he's actually I sent him over the assignment fee, and I I told that sub two student you jerk this around enough, it's gone. Right. Now, is it? I don't know if it's going to close or not because the guy didn't, you know, sign the deal. But I only sent it to him last night at like nine o'clock at night. Hey, man, the, the way I feel about that, honestly, is um, like we've been taught: just next, move on to the next deal. This so, is not even worth the time. You could be, you can be using that time and energy toward closing something else. Yeah, and then uh, I was working on another. It was a um, another deal in Chicago, South Side uh, burnout deal. And um, it's a, a short sale and the seller, uh, excuse me, the agent refused to allow me to attach a, addendums to his contract. You know, like the mutual release date addendum, you know, that we need to get. Yeah. He wouldn't let me attach that. Why not? Good question. Cause that's what I said. But, On to the next deal, Mike. Yeah. So the so bottom line is, is I, I just let that one sit for a while. Uh, that would, that whole thing happened two and a half weeks ago, but uh, I see the property is still listed for sale. So what I'm probably going to do tomorrow is I'm just going to send him up my contract and say, go ahead and submit that. Yeah. Cause my contract contract doesn't have addendums in it. My contracts have, has those, all that stuff in there is paragraphs. Okay. So, yeah. So you were asking about, do I do deals in Chicago? I've been trying to do deals in Chicago, but I've learned that Chicago is a different place, man. Well, what I'm going to do, Mike, I'm going to send one over to you. Oh. I'll email it to you. You can let me know if you got interest in it. Okay. Um, matter of fact, I can give you the address right now. Yep. And then, and then I'm going to have to run. I got some uh, sellers calling me right now. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So the address is 133 133- North Mozart, M A, I mean M O Z A R T, Mozart. Yep. Yeah, one three three North Mozart, and that's Chicago six zero six one two. Six oh yeah, that's uh, six zero six one two. That's South Side, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's um. I'm not exactly sure exactly what where that zip code is because I'm not really in that market. I just had people calling me from that from all over about deals so but i got this one um so just um let me know if you got interest in it is it uh, is it a pretty house is it a rehab what's the deal it's a rehab i got i got some i got some buyers that are players i got some buyers that are players up in chicago for rehabs let's get it done man um uh i, I think you got my direct number don't you 219 246 one three three two. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let me take a look at it and then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Take a look at it and call me up. All right, we'll do. Okay, Mike. Good talking a, with you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Joe Figueroa. Hey Mike, how's it going? It you know, I absolutely love doing this, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can tell you enjoying yourself. The people on on that show up for these things are just so freaking cool. Yeah, and we appreciate all your hard work. Thanks for everything that you do for us. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things, man. That uh, I'm in the trenches like everybody else. I'm getting yelled at and told the, all the bad stuff, and every once in a while, something cool comes along. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I got a couple of those are responses today too from realtors. One of the things I didn't tell you guys is that uh, sub two buyer who was jerking me around and literally told me we don't pay wholesalers that much. And I'm like, you don't want to pay me a note that doesn't pay me for seven years. <clears throat> well, when I told her, I said, we got another contract. We can go with that contract. She wrote me like an eight paragraph text. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, what are you thinking? <laughs> you know, it's 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 uh it's it's one of those you gotta, you know, you gotta just roll with it. If it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen for you. And this is never personal. And all I all, all I was texting back is you're changing your written offer. That's it. You're changing your written offer. Just because you don't want to pay me. <laughs> Seven years from now. It's not like I was even getting any cash up front. The way right. they would have set up the deal is I would have get paid, I would have got paid the 26th. It was a would have been, you know, a hundred basically an interest only, you know, no. Hundred dollars a month for you know seven years, but you know twenty six thousand when they sell it or rehab it or whatever. But a balloon in seven years, and they yeah. they didn't want to do that because they don't pay wholesalers that much. <laughs> uh, and they're also like, you can't set up a note that way. And I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. You clearly don't know anything about notes. <laughs> if it, if you if it's written down, it can be set up that way. It can. It, 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 the thing about creative financing, you'll hear Pay say this, with creative financing, we make the rules, not the bank. We can it's in the name. It's in the name of the process. Creative. We, we can. We make the rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and yeah, like I'm, like I was I'm, telling I'm, you. Yeah, I'm dealing with that right now. I, 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 you know, Spanish is my second language. Yeah. And my mom would. She refused to teach us any English until I was like six or seven years old. I mean, any Spanish, I mean, she wouldn't teach us any Spanish until I was like six or seven. But, um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm working with a wholesaler right there in Florida who wants to uh, do a gator uh, loan. And so I'm, I'm trying to explain to him, it's like, that's not a gator loan. You're asking for a private money loan. You know, yeah, you need EMD, but you know, he's he's got these, huge plants you know and i'm thinking you know it's it's a duplex in florida i think it's like clear clear lake or something and uh but he, he's gonna turn it into a burr right now a burr <laughs> yeah and so i rehab refinance right well, good, <laughs> good luck <laughs> That's it. And, and so he tells me that, you know, and my Spanish is like I said, it's limited, but I caught that one, you know, and I'm like, I looked at the place. He sent me the address and everything. I looked at the place. I'm like, it doesn't need that much renovation, you know, total time, maybe two months. I don't know. He'll spend maybe like 30, 40 grand to, to do some touch-ups and stuff, but still that's not a Gator loan. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a, that's a private money loan. Yeah, that's a private money loan. Because and short term like that for rehab, that's a hard money loan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so he's got it all lined up except for the EMD. And well, you know, I had to tell him that's, you know, that's it's that's not how we loan money. <laughs> well, I mean, if he doesn't have, what? how much does he need for the EMD? 3000 Yeah. 3000 1500 you know, $1,500 back. So $4,500 total. Right. Yeah, exactly. And but the thing is that, you know, he, he doesn't want to pay us until the end, until he refinances. That's, down the road. You're right. That's not a gator loan. That's a private yep. money loan. Yep. And nobody's going to do a private money loan on an EMD. No, no. So I'll, 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 I'll get back in touch with him. You know, the guys, he's motivated. He's, he's, he's getting stuff done. He, he closed a deal in Denver. He had one in in, um, in Atlanta, and he's based out of out of Florida, you know. So he's he's active. He's doing stuff, but it's just, you know, um, yeah, I, we're having a hard time communicating with each other what it is that we do. You know, the thing about it is that exit strategy of fix and flip, man, that's just got risk written all over it. Yeah. Well, he says that it's going to be a buy and hold for him. He wants to you know, cash flow it. And so I'm like, okay, but the whole thing, it just, I don't know, just from the beginning, I, I, I didn't, you know, right when he explained, I didn't even have to look at the numbers. I didn't have to look at the property, mm -hmm. just him explaining it. 
I I quickly, you know, picked up like, yeah, that's not going to be a we, we won't be able to do something like that. What was it? His exit strategy is long term rent. Yeah, long term rent. Long term rent, and it's right down the road from my my uh, privy froze up for whatever reason, so I can't pull it up right now. All right, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's uh, it, it's it's an it's a nice condition. It's it's really nice. Um, I'm not sure if he said if it's vacant or not, but you have any idea what the ARV is? Uh, the ARV was going to be at about two, two eighty, two ninety. But I can't pull it up anymore because the my uh, my thing froze up. <laughs> you know what I'm doing, right? Uh, this where where did you say this property was? Atlanta? No, it's in Clear Lake, I think, or something in in Florida. Clear water. There you go. There. Oh, Clearwater. Yeah. All right. So I'm using Jacksonville numbers. All right. Give me a second. Yeah, Clearwater, Florida. Uh, ARV, according to him, it says 280. I mean, an ARV is a 400. And they're asking 280 for it. You're familiar with the one one percent rule, right? Yes. You know what the average rent is in Clearwater, Florida? No. Eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So I I knew it. I knew it just by him explaining the process, what he was, what his exit was, and just doing some quick math. You know, in my head, I'm like that that it's it it's not gonna. Let me ask you a question. Is this a three bedroom, two bath house? No, it is. It's a duplex. It's a one, one. It's um, each, um, each, each uh, place is a one, one, one bedroom, one bath. Hang on a second. That might change things a little bit. And it says it's vacant right now. All right, a one bedroom, one bath gets is fourteen uh, at about four fourteen fifty a month. Fourteen fifty. So let's multiply that by two. Uh, twenty nine a month. Twenty nine hundred a month. But you apply the one percent rule, your cash flowing a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> On a duplex, yeah, I'm it, gonna I'm gonna go with that's not enough. No, I'm so gonna I'm say gonna, for a duplex, you gotta be you gotta be like six seven hundred dollars a month cash flow. Yeah, yeah, because the the fees and 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 then all your contingency your your backup plan in case something you know your your basically what you say your oh shit money where where are you gonna that at a hundred dollars a month that's only twelve hundred a year. And keep and, keep in mind that with duplexes, all your maintenance is times two. Yep. Times you two. got two compressors, you got two air handlers, you got two stoves, you got two refrigerators. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. I don't think, you know, just applying the one percent rule. I don't, you know, if he could get, you know, the average for a one bedroom, one bath of fourteen hundred dollars a month. What and that's just going off of what I can see from apartments, you know, one bedroom, one bath apartments. But twenty nine hundred dollars a month, you know, gross. Hmm, that's way too tight for me. Yeah, and then and it still needs. I mean, it's a needs some serious roof. Is uh two thousand and six. That's when they replace it, so it's it's due. Yeah, it's at the last. Yeah, you're right. Last third of its life. Yeah.
And that's a duplex. That is not a single family house. Right. So that's twice the, the square foot. Maybe not there. twice, but at least one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, and, he, and he's wanting to burr that. So he's wanting to buy it, finance it, hard money lend it, fix it, refinance it at 7%. Yeah. It's not there. He, it, you know, it's oh, it, it's there. It's just tight as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing about it is, I wouldn't be banking on appreciation. Not right now. Not there. That's what I'm saying. I I wouldn't be banking on appreciation. Appreciation is not going to fix that. <laughs> yeah. So even in 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 a five year, if he holds it five years, it's still going to be. I mean, it's still going to be as tight as it is right now. The cash flow. And you can't call $100 cash flow. Yeah. No, you really can't, especially on a duplex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. I, I think you're smart to say, uh, well, you're definitely smart to go, no, no. <laughs> I, yeah. Gator <laughs> money is at closing, not when you refund. Right. No. Yeah, exactly. That's a private money loan. And you might, it's, you know, find somebody who will give you the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, 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 that $1,500 for the $3,000, you know, Gator deal would have to come out of the hard money. Yeah. You know, and if I got to explain that to you, then, you know, my, my job is not to explain that to somebody, you know, say, yeah. Hey, this is how I get paid. You yeah. know, you should already know that I can't hold out that long because, you know, what are we doing this with? We're doing this with other people's money and other people are going to expect their money in a quick turnaround. Yeah. 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 I mean, just from what you gave me, I don't see a, a real positive exit. But then again, I don't know how he's getting, you know, how he's getting into it either. Right. Yeah, exactly. He says he has a lender in place. I don't know. I mean, yeah. but would it, would his loan? He, so is he? First off, is he buying this right? Is he what? Is he buying it right? I don't know. I yeah. don't think so. I don't think yeah. he's. You know. Because my because here's the thing. Let me just do the math on this one. Where did it go? And that place is tiny. 853 square feet. The one we're talking about? Yeah. The duplex. That's got to be two, both sides. Well, no, one side. It's got to be one side. Yeah. There's no way that you can split and put a duplex 400 square feet. <laughs> So that's got to be both sides. So it's a 1,600 square, 1,700 square feet. Stop me if I'm wrong, and I haven't done this in a while, but if he was going to fix this and then burr it and refinance it, he's going to get an 80% loan, right? Right. That means he's working with $224,000. So he's got he's to buy it, rehab it, for under under two twenty four. Yeah, and the and the price is two eighty eight. I think I said that right. Two eighty, you said. I just said the ARV is two eighty. No, ARV is four hundred, but oh. asking price is two eighty. Oh. According to his numbers, the ARV is four hundred. Right. Ask is 280. Correct. Well, Sorry second. about that. No, that changes things a bit. Sorry about that. Yeah, that changes things a lot, actually. Yeah, you'd have to send me all the numbers on this because what we just did before didn't make sense at 280, but at 400,000?
Yeah, he could he could he could get a mortgage at 320. And it would all right. So apply the one percent rule. He would need to be at thirty two hundred, and he's going to have twenty nine coming in. So starting to look a little bit more right. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he's quite there yet. It, it's yeah. still not. Uh, you know, it's it's in the word cash flow. It's not cash flowing. Yeah, but I would have to get more details on this before we could actually pull it apart. Yeah. But I, this original conversation to, was he wants to get, he wants to pay his gator fee when he gets, you know, when he refinances. Right. And yeah. that could be forever. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. Nobody that I talk to is going to do that. Right. Yeah. No way. No, I know exactly. And you've talked to many gators, 175 yeah. of them <laughs> to be exact. <laughs> and there's no way, you know. And so I didn't reach out to anybody. You know, I got my my usual that I'll go to. Hey, can you can you look at this for me? Whatever. Yeah. But I didn't I didn't I didn't go that far today because I just I just know. I mean, I'm not. You know, I didn't do it on the calculator or anything like that. But you could just look at something. As long as you've been doing this, you just looked at the numbers before you even you know, did the calculation and you knew that it's, it's not, it's not going to cash flow. So there's no way. Yeah. I mean, the 1% rule isn't, I mean, it's a rule of thumb. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Yeah. I mean, on that deal, you know, if he's going to get a, a $320,000 loan, he's got to be able to get 3,200 in cash each month. And at four, you know, at the average rent of fourteen fifty for a one bedroom, one one bath apartment, it gets him to twenty nine hundred. I mean, he's you know, he's there, but not by a, not by enough for to make it make me comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They gave one comp that sold for four ten. A duplex? Yeah. Well, I didn't do anything. Yeah, like I said, my privy's not working at the moment, so I can't look anything up. I wonder what you get. Well, the internet didn't go out, that's for sure. Yeah, well, did the system crash? It, it, it keeps doing that. Privy? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, every time that somebody's running some sort of, uh, when he when he hosts something with Jamil or Pace, they crash the system because <laughs> <laughs> everybody's logging on at the same time. Yeah, you know, at the same time, and you just can't do that with four hundred, five hundred people at the same time. Yeah, Plus, all the other regular users. Yeah, exactly. Like you, <laughs> right? Like me. I, I live on this thing. <laughs> uh what, hey, what what time does the, the their thing start? Uh, the Monday wholesale, night, how wholesale hotline. What time does that start? Uh it, they're not having it today and and because of uh Fourth of July. Ah, all right. Cool. Well I appreciate I love, it, Mike. Yeah. Hey, I I love the idea that you're gonna be the uh the the tonight you were the unofficial moderator. <laughs> um if you want you can have the job full time i'll I'll just set you up as a moderator okay cool, cool. i can do that yeah man i hope yeah. uh, i mean you know um we had you know four or five people that came on which is awesome i mean obviously you know it's fourth of july night um, right but, uh you know we got a couple of things we got i think i think we got a couple of, i think we're i'm gonna i mean you know, rich white's got something hot up in chicago and just because I've been working on those disaster de Chicago, man, the people up in Chicago are weird. Yeah. <laughs> I thought New York people were weird. Chicago people are, but Ralph, yeah. Ralph, it's, just, it's, I don't know. It, it's that whole scarcity mindset just really gets people in a weird place. Yeah. 
but Ralph is a, he's new. He just contacted me. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. He reached, I think I told you, he reached out into the Facebook group and said, can somebody help me? Nobody responded to him. Okay. I did like, I can help you. And look, I steered him away from a bad deal and he brought me a screaming deal at 48%. Yeah, that's good. And all he needs is somebody to hold his hand all the way through. Mm -hmm. I got a call from Dennis. Hey, what's up with Dennis? Uh, he was just telling me thanks for the contract that I sent him. And I was going to ask you, too, if if I, I can't find that email from Pace with the new batch of contracts. So if you could forward that to me whenever you get a chance. I'll do it right after we get off the uh, call here. Okay. Oh. But this is turning out to be exactly what I want. If you struggle in you know, getting your questions answered on the big calls, come in here. We'll help you walk through you step by step by step. Yeah. I exactly, exactly. And and um um that Richardson deal that you said. Uh-huh. Oh no, but that's gonna be that's a, that's a subject too. So yeah, it's a subject. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a subject too that's under contract. The realtor has the contract on it, but he wants cash. And I'm like, and 2.8%? Uh-uh. Do not pay that off. That's dumb. <laughs> Maybe we need to, uh, you know, break out the old uh, education on that realtor there. Like, hey, you're missing out on something. Just because he doesn't. It was like when that realtor earlier, just before I got on the call, that is taking a house that needs work and trying to sell it for all cash at, at after repaired value. Yeah. And I didn't go into, well, I can make this creative and I can do this and that and the other thing and blah, 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 blah. I and I learned this from, I, I I don't know where I learned this from, but I learned to ask, have you ever taken a creative financing course at the association? Not, have you ever learned it, but have you ever taken one? Because the association is where they get their CMEs. Right. She, she answered back, no. So she wasn't threatened by that statement. But when she said no, there's no way in the world I'm pitching her creative because she's going to look at like, that's illegal. Right. But the thing is, if the broker took the class, that means that they can go on there and the brokers love to see this when someone takes initiative to go learn something new because it's, it's, in, it's just there in a vault. Go in there, take it off the shelf. Dust it off because no, the only people that read it are the trainers and the brokers. Yeah. And that's once a year. Yeah. You know, take it off the shelf, dust it off, read it, and learn something new. And for the last five, five or six years, realtors could sell everything cash. Yeah. Those days are over. Yeah. We are now, we are not, for the next three or four years, we're going to be in creative world. But, but see, and I'm glad that you mentioned that to me because that's what I learned. That's my takeaway. I wrote it down of, of today. If the broker took the class, it's in the vault. That's right. Go grab it and learn something new. And they would be surprised how much more money they could make at the end of the year Oh God, yeah. versus their their counterparts who are just, you cash. know. All cash. cash. All cash. All cash from a bank. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so that's something that I would bring up. Like right now, I've got a I've got a realtor right now that I'm um, I'm in a in a group right now where basically what we're doing, you know, it's going to be a little bit of everything. He wants to throw in some land. We want to throw in some private money, gator, all of this stuff together. And there was a realtor there, and bragging, oh, I'm I'm a uh, I don't mind cold calls. I don't mind doing this and I don't mind that. So I have a whole thing of, that I can put together for her, but that would be how I would approach it. Have you taken, and I'm glad that I learned that from you, have you taken subject two? Yeah. Learn that. And if right. she said no, then well, I'll show her that plus the, biz, the, 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 um, the business model that I've learned of realtors about what realtors can do and that we could work something together, her and I, you know, for the group, because what we're doing is that we're just tossing something on the table and everybody eats. Yeah. You know, and so that's what we could, you know, as a while we're building up our 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 gator business and our private money and all of that, you could just be supplementing income in there because there's still activity going. You know, so, yeah, so that that gave me a great idea. I'm glad that you said that. 
Hey, we all learn from each other, man. Yep. You know, all right. I don't, I I don't claim it. to know everything and I don't claim to be a guru. I've just been doing it a long time and I work hard and, you know, when I make a mistake, I fix it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it answers that question. It is not illegal. Oh, if, no. the broker, if the broker did it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the thing about it is if they teach it at the association, go down to the association and take their course. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just got thinking about that. You know what? I might call the local association here and, and see if they actually have the CR, the, C, uh, the CRE course. I can't take it because I'm not a realtor, but I just wonder if they have it. Yeah. And I could ask you to ask this realtor if she's if if they have it in there yeah she should be able to look she could just ask her broker have you ever done this yeah yeah and then you know I, I might do the same thing for orlando because i do a lot of phone calls in orlando might do the same thing to the to the tampa association just like so when i'm talking to these realtors like hey have you taken the, the uh the uh, subject to course at the association because you know i talked to so-and-so and they have it See what you're doing is you're you're putting the authority on the association, right? Yeah, so they yeah can it, exactly. It can't be illegal. The association teaches it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I, that, I never connected that dot because I know a, a wholesaler here who went to a title company that and said, "Hey, I want to teach some realtors that you're working with subject to why if the training's there for the the state of Texas." Then let's find out. I, you know, and and I've got enough connections to where I could ask specifically a realtor what is the title, what is you know, because everything's not hey subject to no, it's some sort of you know S R E dash one two five eight whatever yeah. you know. I'm like okay, but but they know what it what it is, you know. And I've got several friends that are realtors that I could just ask and 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 say. You know, you should uh, consider learning about that. And like I said, brokers love people who take initiative. Yeah, that's true. I, uh, I've i got a, a realtor that I work with. She's great. Her name's Kathleen over in Orlando. And she moved, she moved here to Orlando in January from being a realtor in Maine. Oh, okay. And what she does is once a month she prints out the neighborhood that she farms in she prints out the home values yeah and she wow. just goes she spends like an hour a day just knocking you know walking down the street knocking on doors when people open the door like hey you know my name's kathleen i'm a, a i'm your local real estate agent just wanted to drop this people piece of paper off tell you what your house is worth if you're interested in selling you know or listing your property my contact information's on the sheet bye and walks away <laughs> She went from brand spanking new in six months. She's a top lister in the whole region. Whoa. Just by doing that. Just wow. by spending an hour a day telling people what their houses are worth. Amazing. It ain't rocket science, man. <laughs> it ain't rocket science. <laughs> no, because, I mean, when you, you, you put that in there, I bet you, uh, you know, I don't know, out of 100 – Two or three of those wind up on the dinner table that day. That's exactly what happens. That's how she went from nobody to being the number one lister. Yeah. Because you're bringing people value. Yeah. And when they're ready to sell, they're not going to go through the phone book. They're going to be like, hey, Kathleen is, you know, three months in a row dropped off, you know, what our house is worth. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> and they yeah. call her. And she, you know, she'll be the first to tell you she got nothing out of it for like the first two months. Most yeah. people would have quit after a week. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it, you're just filling that pipeline. That's exactly right. You just, you know, you're, you know, it's kind of like that whole thing about, you know, you're pumping that well. It, it's and, not going to come up, you know, until until it doesn't. Then it's just flowing. And when I interviewed when I interviewed Nate, that's what I realized about my own business. I'm just not talking to enough realtors. Yeah. And believe it or not, you cannot hand dial enough realtors. So I turned my, I turned batch back on. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I had batch, but I always only run in a single line, but it does make a huge difference. Yep. 
And the thing, the thing that I didn't get into that he's, he actually gave me the map, but then, so batch goes out, dials three lines, first person to answer, drops the other two, you talk it. Then when the call's done, you select the action, you know, of what just happened mm -hmm. and it automatically pumps it into Podio and then he's got it set up. So it automatically pumps it into go high level. Oh, okay. And then. Wow. Go High Level is the base program for Astro Blaster. Yep. And he basically built his own Astro Blaster. <laughs> oh, except, wow. he's, except he's not limited to one market. Exactly. Right. So all of this stuff happens automatically. It's not like he's got to take it out of batch and put it into podium and then take it out of podium and put it into high, Go High Level. He just hits a button in batch and it boom. It, it goes into Podio, it automatically goes into Go High Level, and Go High Level knows what to do with it and starts sending out the follow-up emails automatically every two weeks. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and email. I, I guess everybody didn't see it, but um, I posted it on uh, Saturday. Um, but it, it was a kick-ass. A kick. So you're, are you, where are you posting these things? Where do you post? My YouTube them? channel. You're, you, you have a YouTube channel? I do. Okay. I'm going to go follow it right now. <laughs> I'll me I'll email it to you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll have and then next week that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll put some contracts in there. I'll put your YouTube channel, your your website and all of that all in one text, you know, on the on the chat so people have the resources right there available. Excellent, dude. All right. Partner. All right. <laughs> cool. See you. <laughs> Ralph, if you're still here, Alexis, if you're still here, great talking to you guys. We'll talk soon.